morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Kanapaha Presbyterian Church. I'd like to welcome you all to worship this morning. Feel free to settle in, but keep your focus on the Lord. I have a few announcements this morning, one of great glory. Uh, the capital campaign has reached $10,905. That is better than a third of what we have asked for. Yes, give God a chance. We're not worried about the wasp right now, unless they're bringing a donation. Uh, the message from Karen this morning is, uh, the thermometer is inching up toward our $30,000 goal. Small and large donations get us closer. Even giving up the daily Starbucks could get us $30 closer every week. And I thank God for all that you're doing and your faithfulness. Next week is Pentecost. I'm telling you that now because I understand the tradition here is to every, for everyone to wear red. So if you feel like being part of that group of red-wearing type folks, that's great. It would be kind of nice to see everybody in all one color, which would just be interesting. The purpose of the red is to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit as a reminder to all of us of what God has done for us. Is, are there any other announcements from the congregation? No? All right then. <clears throat> Let us look to the Lord. Eternal God, precious Savior, Holy Spirit, with us this morning, be with us in a special way. We don't always understand what you're doing in our lives, but we thank you for your constant surveillance, your constant intervention. We thank you for a Savior who prays for us each and every day. We thank you this morning for the beautiful sunlight, the warmth that brings our bodies, the warmth and that it gives our minds the peace. Just looking around at the world that you've created to bless us. Now, Lord, we invite your presence into this place in a new and powerful way. Touch hearts and minds, meet needs, be the God you desire to be in our lives. And help us, Lord, to give you the praise, glory, and honor now and forever that is due your name. Amen. Amen. is greater. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. This is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. We gather knowing that you have eternal life. Let us worship the Lord one life together a call to confession. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace in this in every time of need. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. The prayer of confession. We pray, O Lord, not due to our own wisdom, insight, and strength, but through you. You intercede for us because we do not know how to pray as we ought. We even hear and know our sighs, which are to be forwards. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when our prayers are filled with empty phrases and meaningless attitudes. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when our prayers fail to express our love for you and our neighbors in need. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when our prayers do not lead 
silent confession. <clears throat> the assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. My friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The prayer of illumination. Gracious God, who has given us the rich and precious jewel of your holy word, assist us with your spirit that it may be written in our hearts to our everlasting comfort, to reform us, to renew us according to your own image, to build us up and edify us into the perfect building of your Christ, sanctifying and increasing in us all heavenly virtues. Grant us this for Jesus Christ's sake. The first reading today is from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Today is um, a message for children. Are there any children in the congregation? Well, all of us are God's children. All of you are God's children. Well, I'll just go ahead and do the children's message um, because I prepared for it. <laughs> and, uh, and it won't hurt it. And it probably won't be too painful. Uh, the reading that I read uh, for this lesson was from Scripture, uh, Ezekiel 37, verse 14. It talks about the church that came alive. And the whole time I was reading it, I kept thinking about Kenneth because I feel like we are alive today. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. So um, I wanted to discuss today that we're all, we all play a part in this church. Uh, Joanna plays the music. I'm the liturgist this week. Pastor says the prayers. And we all support this church. We all are a part. And without us, there wouldn't be a church. We the people are the church. And so I was going to ask you, uh, I know that my biggest part that I play in this church is that I, I come here every Sunday and participate in the liturgy. Um, and I was going to ask in, in the congregation, if you could come up with something that you do to keep this church alive. And I was going to ask Karen, what do you do? <laughs> uh, let's see. I post the service on Facebook. Thank you. Kill um, lots. That's, that's <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been known to um, dig graves. Wow, did grace. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Okay, and then I was going to ask Veronica, what do you do for this church? I just attend in church and 
praising the Lord's name. Thank you. And greeting all of my fellow uh, church members and saying how they're doing. It makes me happy to see them. Thank you. And then I was going to ask Joan, don't think you're going to get by without <laughs> saying something. Well, I'm the treasurer of the church, so I kind of look after the finances, the pay the bills, kind of make sure everything's running for the rest of us to enjoy and worship the Lord. And we so appreciate you. Um, so uh, we all play an important part, and without all of our parts together, there really wouldn't be a church that would be functioning. So let's bow our heads for the prayer today. Lord, may we all contribute to this church. Help us to accept our part. Thank you. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, those that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 I entitled this morning's message, The Longest Lord's Prayer. The passages that I just read to you are part of John's farewell discourse, the things that Jesus is saying to his disciples to keep them as he faces his crucifixion. What I've just read to you has been called Jesus' high priestly prayer. And if you really look at it, there's enough theology here to keep you busy from now to eternity. <clears throat> but I don't want to get into too much of the theology because we could spend some time here. What I want to talk to you about this morning is the fact that Jesus facing death thought it was important to pray. Not only for himself and his disciples, but for us as well. The context is, this is Thursday night. It's part of John's account of the evening before crucifixion. Jesus knows he'll be leaving his, his disciples to fulfill the end of his mission. And he wants them to be prepared. So Jesus has been teaching his disciples everything he wants them to know across chapters, especially the last three chapters that we've been reading, about his nature, his mission, his destiny, and their role in the future church. They don't get it right all the time. Neither do we. But I notice what Jesus prays for. The first thing he says is, it's not going to be easy. I'm praying, Lord, I'm praying, Father, that you keep them. That you keep them safe. Keep them from the spirit that wants to run this world and run them to the ground. 
Keep them in what they need to do. Keep them in all they need to have. Keep them safe. Don't let them fear a lack of abundance. Don't let them fear what they see in front of their face. Don't let them fear the danger that they're going to see as I lay down my life for these sheep. It's a real power struggle here. Jesus is letting them know that there's powers in this world that are going to come against you. I don't know if any of us have experienced that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Jesus prays for them that God would keep them. And the next thing he says is that everything would be taken care of. They are not my people. They are yours first. And you gave them to me and I've kept them safe. But now my physical presence is not going to be with them. So, Father, I give them back to you. Jesus didn't lose a one of them. Isn't that great to know that Jesus not only prays, but he gets answers? I like that kind of prayer. When I know that the person praying has really got an inroad with God. Now, I don't know about most of you, and I didn't even meet my grandmother until I was much older. But I had one of them Pentecostal grandmothers. And if you have one of those that prays without ceasing and prays eternally and prays everything that's on her heart, you might as well just get it together now because you're not going to get away. But those were the kind of people that I could just love to hear them pray. And I get the same impression here. As Jesus is praying, the disciples have just finished their meal and it's like, well, what's going on here? And they just sit and they listen. And I think Jesus had it all planned out because with what they're about to face, if he, they had not heard him pray, they might not have understood that they're being kept. I had a friend that would pray, I don't care what the problem was. She prayed for puppy dogs, she prayed for kitty cats, she prayed for crazy people, she prayed for the rest of us too, who were probably in the same boat with one of them. But she didn't mind praying, and when she prayed, you kind of understood, hearing her words, that she and God had something going on. That they weren't falling on deaf ears. And it got to be the point in my previous church that if somebody was having a real problem, they went to get her to pray for them. You see, some folks in our world have been tested. They've been tried. They've been through some things. And when they pray, they know God is the one who brought them through. And they pray to God as their best friend, the one who's listening. This particular lady had been through a lot. She was a retired state police officer and got called to the ministry. That isn't funny. She had worked narcotics and she worked several other things that we aren't supposed to know about, I suppose. But she had this inkling that she could look you in the eye and not only know what you were thinking and whether you were lying or not, but she could see what God needed out of you. And she prayed in that manner. Jesus is doing the same thing. He's looking at what's about to happen. And he's praying so that the apostles can hear so that they know they're going to be kept, that they belong to the Father, that no matter what's about to happen, God has them. No matter how chaotic it may seem, God has them. Every week we recite the Lord's Prayer, and probably more often than that when we pray. But really, that was the disciples' prayer. They came to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray, and that was a beginning for them. Jesus had a personal relationship, and so he can actually go to God and talk what's on his heart, to explain to God in their hearing. I think the prayer was more for them than for Jesus himself. Right before his crucifixion and betrayal, if I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I probably wouldn't be thinking about praying for y'all. But Jesus does that. I pray that I would, because I know there'd be some things to deal with, but we don't always think like that. We don't think of what we can do. And your message this morning was right on task because while we sit around and we, we do certain things in the church, maybe we are the treasurer or we, you know, we, we think we have special talents, there's one thing we can all do even if we think we have no talents. And that is to intercede for the people in the church, for the ministry of this church. If you have a relationship with God, God is just waiting to hear from you anyhow. Tell him what's on your heart. 
And don't pretend. God knows anyhow. But get those words out there. Why? Because your faith is strengthened when you hear the prayers, whether it's your prayers or someone else's. Romans tells us that our faith is strengthened when we hear the word. Pray the scriptures. God, you told us that you would always be with us. God, be with us now in this situation. Be with us now as the problems come. Be with us now as I'm looking for a new vision. Be with us now as we need things to change. Don't be afraid to talk to God like he's really God. And believe that he will do things. The second thing Jesus says then is to God, glorify me as you are glorified. What's he really saying here? He's saying, I know what's coming. And I know what it's supposed to do. So God, glorify me not that I'm you know, big and bad and I'm looking for an ego trip. Glorify me in fulfilling my mission and doing what it is you would have me to do. You glorify me, I glorify you in doing what you've asked of me. Glory comes now for Jesus with his arrest, his betrayal, and crucifixion. Most of us want glory, but we don't want it that way. We want it to come as accolades. We want it to come as we've accomplished something or we're really important to someone. You want to upset somebody? Throw a birthday party and have someone else come to that party that has the same birthday. It steals their thunder. And if you're a teenager, and I've had this in my family because there's a few of us around, if you're a teenager and we're throwing you a birthday party and your little brother just happens to be on the same birthday, or within two days, guess who gets the attention? The little guy. Guess who got jealous? The older sister. But Jesus isn't saying that. He's saying, glorify me so I can give the glory back to you. Glorify me in what I'm doing and what I'm doing in obedience to your word, and the glory will be yours. Yes, they're all in this together. Instead of both of them having a piece of cake and being thrilled, they were a little upset with each other for daring to be born on my birthday. <laughs> Jesus says, keep them, Father. Keep them safe. Keep them in glory. And then he lets us know that we're going to share that glory as we move on in the mission that Christ has given us. We will be glorified in God's eyes as we give God glory by doing what it is we're called to do. And then Jesus says he's not asking for all the people, he's asking for these that God has given him. These special people. Yes, God loves the whole world. I'm not going to argue that point. But Jesus prays for these individuals that he's worked with in a different way. He doesn't, he's not saying, God, you got to save them. God, you got to send them somebody. He's saying, God, they know your word. They're keeping your word. Does that sound like us? We don't get it right all the time, and the disciples at this point were still messing up royal. But Jesus says, they know your word. They'll keep your word. He can see in from the beginning. He knows who's going to be faithful and who's not. And he's praying for them because even if you're trying to be faithful, sometimes things get in your way. Sometimes it feels like the devil is just waiting for you to take one more step and think that he's got you. He's got something set up. Now, I know we don't talk about the devil a lot and all that kind of thing, but let's face it. Sometimes there's things that come our way that we're not expecting. And if we weren't a praying people, they may take us out of here. Several of us have near, had, had near misses with automobiles. The old saying of, oh, we missed that by a coat of paint. No, you missed that by prayers and some angels with skin knees. Somebody was looking out for you. And that somebody is the God that has claimed you as his own. Who's taking care of you and setting things up for you and knows ahead of time what's coming your way. And I can't help but believe that if we would pray, God would give us the idea of what's coming and tell us how to take care of it when it gets here. And I know that for a fact because it has happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to some of you here, where you change your mind at the last minute, or you do something just a little bit different, and you wonder how close you would have been to that accident had you gone your regular way. That feeling the Spirit gives you says, take this road right now. The feeling the Spirit gives you says, 
Pray for this child. Pray for that one. And you find out later that they were so close to being killed or hurt that you wonder why you would have missed it. What would have happened had you not prayed? And then there's times that we just pray because we need to be prepared for what God is sending our way. We don't always understand what hits us between the eyes. But if we pray and we have that communication open, we know God's got us. Why? Because Jesus prayed for his Father to keep us. He prayed compassionately, knowingly, personally for us. It's inevitable that things will turn out well for you because God has already promised. Jesus has prayed and given you the truth. But at the same time, remember that Jesus thought it was important enough to pray for us. So you know there's problems that could come our way. If Jesus himself thinks that prayer is important, then maybe we should give it a little more credibility. This prayer had tremendous impact on the disciples' hearts. I just know if you hear somebody praying for you, it does more than if they're hugging you and even handing you money sometimes. That someone would take the time to pray for you with a compassion and a knowledge and an understanding of where you are. And maybe they don't know everything about your situation, but they know the God who does. We may not realize the value of praying for others until we're in those situations, but if Jesus took the time to pray, then we need to as well. I'm not saying stop working in the church, but I am saying that no matter who you are or what talents you possess, friend, visitor, or member, it doesn't matter. Pray. That is your ministry. Pray for the people that are here. Pray for the friends. Pray for your family. I had one preacher tell me one time pray to tell you to pray for your kids' spouses, even if they're only 10 years old. Because you don't know what's coming their way. You want them to see the one God has for them when they get here. Pray about what's about to happen. Pray about the future. Pray about what God has given you. Pray where you don't understand what the vision is. Don't pray. I want very much to remind us that sometimes we have children who pray on us better than we pray to God. Tell the child that on Saturday, we're going to go get you a new bicycle, and it's Monday. What happens between Monday and Saturday? You're not going to forget about the bicycle, are you? I want this kind. Where are we going to buy it? What time are we leaving Saturday? How much can I spend? And you hear about that bicycle forever. Come Saturday, you are so thankful to go get that bicycle and make this child happy. And you promise yourself the next time I'm not going to say anything before Saturday. If we pray with that persistence, so much will be accomplished. Pray without ceasing. Don't give up. Keep after it. It's not that God needs to hear it over and over like a parent. We need to hear that we're convinced of it. We need to hear what it is we really want. General prayers are great, but sometimes we forget that God answers them. And we don't thank him for what, we, what he gave us because we weren't specific enough. But you get into a place where you have a need. God, I need a new pair of shoes because I have holes in the bottom of these. That prayer becomes a little more paramount, a little more important. And you put a little more into it. When you pray for others, pray for them like your shoes have holes in it. Pray with some intensity. Pray with what understanding you have. But most of all, pray knowing God will meet that need. Prayer is powerful. And I think many times we miss it. Because we pray and we walk away. Jesus was intense. He called on his relationship with God to meet the needs of his disciples. And before you get the idea that it was way back then only, he also prays for those that will come to faith because of the disciples' testimony. That's you guys. That's me. That's the generations that came before us since the time of Christ. 
Those are some powerful prayers. Knowing that God is keeping us. And if God is keeping us, and what is keeping us from doing what God has asked us to do? What is keeping us from asking God for the vision, even for the next 10 minutes? What is keeping us focused on God and what God is saying? What is keeping us focused on the relationship that we're building? Are we building? If you're still saying, now I lay me down to sleep, I suggest you build your relationship with God. Unless you're five years old. Believe that what God has given you is going to happen. This prayer, while it's one of Jesus' longest prayers, is truly the Lord's Prayer, where he prays his heart for us. He prays for divine protection. He doesn't pray that we would get taken out of this world or that we'd be taken away from suffering. He says to God, bring them through it. I know all this comes with a price. I know this comes with some suffering. But don't let them succumb. Don't let the enemy have them. No, they won't always get it right, and we don't either. But Jesus is praying, knowing that we have the word in our hearts because he's given it to us. And the word will continue to build us up and to grow us as long as we pay attention. We don't know the precise program God has for our lives or for other people. But we are assured of the fact that God will achieve his purposes. Not for our glory, but for his own. For our sanctification, for our building up. Just as Jesus prayed for them, pray for each other. And God the Father will keep all of us. Because Jesus prayed for us. So let us pray. Lord, there is so much to be said from your prayer. So much that may be difficult to understand. But if nothing else, Lord, help us to lift our eyes from earthly things to the heavenly realms. To the degree that we would understand and build a relationship with you. Until we can bring heaven on earth. Help us, Lord, to submit to your word. And let your word do the work in us that you have called. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Holy Spirit, and delight in your love and your power and your presence in our lives. Continue to be with us as Jesus is with you. In the presence of God and in the name of Jesus, we say amen. Our affirmation of faith this morning is printed in your bulletin. Share together. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and in which we are saved. If we hold it fast that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and then to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. And now, as I ask our ushers to come forward, I ask you to prepare your hearts and minds for the offering. Let's pray. As God's blessings shower upon us, we respond to God's amazing grace with our hands, our feet, our hearts, and our prayers, and our tithes and offerings. Let us bring our gifts in gratitude and praise. Ushers. Okay. Volunteers. Tom, Karen. Where are they?
Christ has made the name of the Lord known to us, so we give thanks. In your name, O oh Lord, use these gifts in this time, the talents, and the very lives they represent for your glory as your kingdom breaks forth in this world, in this place. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning is written as a call and response, so you'll need your bulletin. As Christ prays on behalf of his disciples, let us pray on behalf of all those Christ loves. God of grace, the world is full of those who delight your teachings and those who scoff at your ways. We pray that we might meditate on you day and night and that we might be an influence for good in the world. God of wisdom, the world is full of those whose faith seeks understanding and those who discard the truth. We pray that we might receive your word and know that you are the truth that transforms our lives. God of justice, the world is full of those who seek to do what is right and those who seek only to do their own self-interest. We pray for those who protect the innocent and seek to overcome systems that oppress. May we carry your light until all may see your way. May we be like trees, planted by trees of water. God of healing, the world is full of those who are sick, injured, alone, and in need of care, and those who dedicate their lives to caregiving and healing. We pray that your holiness and wholeness will draw near to all who are in need that they might be filled with your presence. May we be like trees planted by streams of water. God of unity, the world is filled with those who claim that they belong to you and those who actively work against your plans and purposes for a new creation. We pray for reconciliation, courage, and faith for your church, that your followers will be sanctified in the truth, and that we might proclaim the good news of redemption in you with great joy to a world in desperate need of good news. May we love trees and the streets of water. As Christ prays on behalf of his disciples, we lift up to you the prayers of our hearts for those we know and love, trusting them to your protection and care. Take a moment to name all those things in your heart, and those folks that you need to pray for. We ask particularly this morning for those who have asked for prayer, for Karen as she faces some tests, medical tests, for those of us who are recovering from illness, for all our first responders and those who stand in harm's way. Father, hear our prayers and give us confidence and courage that we might join our voices together Praying with the words that Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now, as we dismiss, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. As Christ prays for you, pray for one another. As Christ forgives you, forgive one another. As Christ loves you, love one another. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sovereignty of God, and the love of the Holy Spirit, Descend on each of you and remain in power forever. Go in the peace that is yours in Christ to do the work that the Lord has assigned to your hands. Amen. Amen.